Uh, hi, I'm Hannah Fullerton and I work for Bug Life as a conservation officer and we're the only charity in the UK that focuses solely on invertebrates and all of them. They're very important if we want food for um, decomposition of uh, wood around, if we want them to clear up the area and uh, for keeping our nutrients in our soils. They're also, if we want any animals, they're very important as well. So please, if you have a moment or a pound to spare, please donate to Bug Life as we are helping to save the planet. Hello and welcome back to Restore and Planet podcast with me, your host Jack Cole. So today I'm joined by Hannah Fullerton from Bug Life up in Northern Ireland. So first of all, welcome Hannah. Thank you so much for offering us some of your time. And we start by telling us a little bit about your background and how it is that you came to work at Bug Life. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, so I'm Hannah and I uh, work for Bug Life. I um, got into this field by doing a university degree in environmental science at Ulster. Um, I'd always been obsessed with invertebrates from a very young age. I find them fascinating and colourful. They, they were very fun to watch with their little uh, individual personalities. Um, and then I find Bug Life came along in 2016 and I volunteered with them while I was at university. And then... Um, Thankfully for me, jobs came up whenever I left university, so I was able to join in with them. So that was great. Yeah, okay, so tell us about the current situation for invertebrates uh, across Britain. And are there any particular species that are concerning or ones that are perhaps doing quite well? Yeah, so um, it, it's a bit concerning at the minute. In Bug Life, we have this survey called the Bugs Matter, and it's a citizen science. It's a great survey. Uh, it's an app that you can download easily on your phone, so I recommend people get involved with that. But it is counting all the insects that go splat against the registration plates of cars. And it has shown since 2021 to 2023, there has been a 54% decrease in the abundance of insects in general. So this is really, really concerning. It's yeah in Northern Ireland and um, it's even bigger than that in the rest of the UK. So it, it's, it's a very worrying trend and um, losing almost half in the past four years. Um, it's uh, beginning to level off now but um, if we don't begin to uh, make changes now you know it can get really bad because they're definitely crucial for us if, if we want to eat you know they're very useful um there's been a few extinctions as well we believe that the red flash bug uh, it mightn't be here anymore it hasn't been found in surveys for the past few days uh, for a few years sorry um it, it used to be found in the morns near Newcastle at a place called Bloody Bridge and um, so I'm planning to thoroughly search myself this summer but it's not looking good for this species. Other species though where things are looking good is the Northern Cledes species. We actually have the highest population of it in Northern Ireland uh, in the UK and it's uh, found in sand dunes and it builds its little nests in these um movable systems and lays its eggs in holes but yeah we we do want to protect these insects um as they are declining and at risk just a couple of other excuse me a couple of extra questions there so you said that um you know it's astonishing the last couple of years it's been about a 50 percent decrease any idea why that might have happened so a, a lot of um reasons that this would happen is uh, due to the intensification of agriculturals. This land, um, if it's really fertilized, will reduce uh, plant growth. And these plants are crucial for flying insects and pollinators. Um, so that's a problem. Other things like urbanization, um, expanding our towns and cities means that um, we're removing green spaces and it can act like deserts for our insects um, or populations get uh, cut off and that reduces genetic diversity of where they can breed. Um, her land management's quite serious, the overgrazing, if we drain our wetlands, um, not managing scrubland and it takes over, uh, all of this will reduce diversity and um, meaning that there are fewer habitats for these insects. Other things is like coastal development, all of our golf courses with our pesticides and fertilized 
fertilizers all over the grain. It just makes it short and grass. And this is very samey um, and, and not good for our rare invertebrates or any invertebrates at all. You'll not find many insects around there at all. You also touched on that this is a bit of a disaster um, if we want to eat. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind just explaining why that is a little bit? Um, yeah, so they will pollinate our flowers and our trees. So anything that we use for our crops, for our vegetables, or even a lot of our um, other reproduced foods, you know, we, we take it from a source outside, you know, everything has it, its uh, its origins in nature. So we, we do want to look after our nature um, and mammals and things will feed on insects. So if we want our animals around as well, they're also very, very important. Um, Bug Life has a beelines initiative, which tries to aim to connect habitats uh, together and um, like planting flowers and gardens. Uh, so that's definitely something that if you want to look after your mammals or your plants uh, or your insects in your gardens, that's a very easy way to do it. And you touched on some of the reasons why um, this rapid decline in recent years might have taken place. And can you tell us um, perhaps climate, how that's played a factor, and then by way of extension, uh, habitats? Yeah, so... Um, Climate change will shift uh, flowering times um, and insect emergence to be slightly different because uh, flowers uh, will come out whenever it's the correct month for them to come out, whereas insects will come out whenever the weather is good enough. So if there isn't a nice overlap, then we can find that insects are coming out whenever there aren't any flowers. Um, if it's a little earlier and then it rains after, um, that will cause insects to come out and they'll just starve because they haven't got anything to eat. And the flowers won't get pollinated because the correct insects aren't out at the same time as them to spread for pollination. Um, so that, that's another reason why native plants are important to have as well um, because they are evolved with our insects for um, a symbiotic relationship. Of course. Okay. Um, okay. So more specifically now, so your day to day, tell us about your current projects and initiatives that uh, you're involved with at Bug Life. Yeah, so I'm currently uh, completing a project called the Northern Ireland Coastal Invertebrate Project, and this is running from 2023 to 2028, um, and it's funded by uh, DERA, the Department of Agricultural, Environment and Rural Affairs. And so we're aiming to enhance the entomological capacity across these coastal sites. Um, it is uh, focusing just in Northern Ireland and just on coastal sites and in habitat restoration and species monitoring in these areas. Um, so we're targeting different invertebrates, for example, the Northern Caledes, um, the narrow mouthed whorl snail and the heather mining bee. And the goal is to enhance or restore two hectares of habitat each year. So we're looking for more sites um, if anyone uh, fits within this remit um, and, and we have a small pot for um, uh, restoring habitats in the these areas. So it's an excellent opportunity. Fantastic. Um, also, just on a more personal note, would you mind to leave out some of the, your personal favourite invertebrates that you've worked with? Uh, maybe give them a bit of a description, a bit of an ecology of what they look like. You mentioned a couple and it'd be nice to know a little bit more about uh, their appearance, uh, the life cycle, that sort of thing. Yeah, so some of my favorites is the ruby-tailed wasp. It's a beautiful jewel, um, tiny little wasp, and you'll see it um, along brick walls or or areas in um, uh, stone walls in coastal sites. And it's beautiful. It, it uh, glints in the sunlight. It's a red and, and green shade, and it doesn't look real. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a cuckoo wasp, so it will actually let eggs in other bees' nests. Uh, so fascinating um, ecology there as well. It's looking pretty. Um, other insects I love as well is the maybug or cockchaffer beetle. It's this um, massive flying brown beetle. You probably see it around May, June time and you hear it as well. It's so loud, but it's got a lovely um, fluffy underbelly and, and it's just a gorgeous beetle to come across. Fantastic. Well, that's great to hear. I love that. Um, 
Okay, so just cycling back a little bit to Bug Life's work, what have been some of the main challenges? And you've obviously mentioned the reaching of uh, populations. So what have been some of your frustrations and the things that, um, as I say, some of the obstacle challenges that you've been faced with? Yeah, so some of the challenges you come across people who are just completely uninterested, you know, it doesn't affect them directly, or at least it feels like it. So they've, they've no interest in maybe doing a little bit here or there for the invertebrates. But then on the other side of things, you've got really passionate people who've learned a tiny amount of information and think they'll go, um, they'll go plant their own trees in places or um, get honeybees. Now, the reason why this um, is a problem, because it, it sounds good on the surface, is that if it's not uh, the correct species of trees in the correct habitats, um, it will, you know, either destroy habitats or bring in invasive species, which we don't want. So it is it is always good to uh, work with charities um, who know what they're doing uh, for the correct things. And also honeybees as well, they are farmed animals, just like cows. Um, so having as many of these as possible isn't saving bees as a general species. It is them suddenly outnumbering the other native bees. So unless you're a farmer looking to get honey, I would advise bee hotels and bee banks instead of just getting a bee um, uh, beehive, you know, just for the sake of it. To see if the bees. Of course, okay. Um, and sorry, just before we started uh, recording, you mentioned something very interesting that uh, the way that this data is collected is is in a in a, in a, um, a method that people might find surprising, which is bug spattering. If I've got that correctly, I'm counting blood spattering on wind windscreens. If I'm not mistaken, would you mind just telling us a little bit more about how that works? Yeah. So. Um... Bugs Matter, Bugs Matter is what it's called. It's an excellent survey for if you've got zero knowledge whatsoever in insect ID. All you have to do is be able to drive and count insects bodies that have landed on their car and it's a fantastic way for us to get an indication of um, insect abundance across um, the UK. So you can do this anywhere in the UK. It begins from May to September and um, yeah, it, it's really, really simple. It just records your journey as well. So shorter distances are really useful as well because it gives a more pinpoint indication of where the insects are, where they're not so much. There are other um, surveys that you can get involved in as well, like the flower insect time counts. If you're a little bit more confident in insect ID, this is a really simple one where all you have to do is tell the difference between a bee and a fly and a wasp and count all the different kinds of insects that land um, on a particular set of flowers within 10 minutes. And um, So it, it's also an app, very easy to use. Um, and we have got a Teen Tiny Taxa uh, launched recently, which is a brilliant little group uh, where if you're already surveying invertebrates to you've never gotten into it, but you would love to begin, um, the aim is for people to learn from each other and share their knowledge um, and meet in a group four times a year so that we can build up our entomological capacity in Northern Ireland. Fantastic, brilliant, lots of fantastic work. Okay, so I was going to ask how can people uh, get involved, but it sounds like there there's a few few ideas, a few projects, and we'll certainly uh, leave those in the notes if people want to uh, find out more. And more locally for people in their own sort of uh, their green spaces, if it's their gardens, allotments, uh, parks, whatever areas they might have access to, what are some ways that they can engage with and uh, help invertebrates? Yeah, so there are different things you can do and I'll leave a link to a document as well that um, will give this in more details. But the general gist of it is to grow a variety of native plants. So plants will flower at different times of the year. So if you want a big a range as possible because different insects will come, will emerge at different times of the year. So if you have a range of different things in your gardens, this will support a greater diversity of insects. Um, 
it, you want nesting and overwintering sites. So this is where, as I said about your solitary bees, they like little bee hotels or bee banks, which are just little areas where they can lay their eggs in holes. So they're either digging it own, their, their own ones in soil or in a bamboo tube. Um, and then you want other bug hotels, which is like piles of dead wood or stones. And this is where um, beetles and snails and slugs can all hide underneath and millipedes and centipedes uh, will all um, crawl into there. So that, that's perfect. Um, a water source is always useful. Insects need to drink as well. And some of them have their life cycles inside the water, uh, such as hoverflies. So it, uh, if you have a big enough area for a pond, that is um, well worth investing in. To try and avoid putting pesticides and herbicides in your areas, um, I, I would advise this as they, they can be their own natural pesticides, like ladybirds will eat a lot of aphids and stuff. If you if you spray chemicals, it'll just kill everything and your plants will struggle to grow anyway. So you want to encourage as many insects as possible and they'll start sorting themselves out. Um, so that's really useful. Um, less work is, is better. I, I, was, I always say this is helping people out, you know, letting your garden go a bit wild. Maybe you could section out a wee bit, having like a uh, longer grass with shorter grass and some wild weeds going. They, they can be full of colour and a bit wild and lots of fun. Um, yeah, so um, leaving your uh, grass verges around the outside of houses as well is a very useful thing. Don't get onto your council so much to cut it short because actually it is the wild that the insects need rather than the neat and tidy. Fantastic, brilliant. And it's a good time of year for it. Sun's out, at least for the moment. Uh, yeah. Good time to plant, good time to get out in the garden. Okay, and finally, um, Hannah, where can people find you if they want to donate or otherwise get involved? Yeah, so we've got the Bug Life website. I'll leave the link there where you can donate to. And on Facebook, we re we are releasing events all the time. If you want to get along, learn some new things, help surveying, all of this stuff it is, is all available. And the Team Tiny Taxa is a way um, that if you sign up for that, you'll get information to your inbox as well. And on the web page of the Northern Ireland Coastal Invertebrates Project on the Bug Life website, you can find my email there and more detailed information of what my project entails itself. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Hannah, for your time and uh, all the best. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Hannah Fullerton and I work for Bug Life as a conservation officer and we're the only charity in the UK that focuses solely on invertebrates and all of them. They're very important if we want food for um, decomposition of uh, wood around, if we want them to clear up the area and uh, for keeping our nutrients in our soils. They're also, if we want any animals, they're very important as well. So please, if you have a moment or a point to spare, please donate to Bug Life as we are helping to save the planet.